Hi there, it's Professor Eric Steinhardt, and we're going to talk about an essential uh, issue with cannabis, an essential point about how cannabis affects human animals. Uh, we are animals, and one of the most unusual things about humans is that we're bipedal. We stand on two legs, we can walk around, um, and we can run. Now, um, some other animals can stand on two legs for a little while, sometimes cats or dogs or meerkats, right? Uh, chickens, birds of various kinds walk around on two legs. Okay, and, um, you know, apes and monkeys can stand on two legs for a little while and they can walk. Uh, but uh, one thing that we can do with our two legs is run. And humans are expert runners. If you, uh, you know, stood in front of the animals, you know, like, and, and the animals said, what can you do? Well, the answer would seem like mm, you'd be kind of embarrassed, right? Because you're not very good at climbing trees and you can't, uh, you can't really swim like a fish or fly like a bird. You don't have claws on your uh, feet or hands. You don't have a sharp protective uh, exterior like an armadillo. It would look like humans are pretty pathetic animals, except for one thing, we can run. Right? Now, obviously, we have brains and, and we have hands for grasping things and making tools and things like that. And those are all parts of our animal nature. But if we're just really thinking about being an athletic animal, what can humans do? Humans can run. Now, you might think, well, cheetahs can run and a cheetah can outrun a human and, you know, kill a human who's running. So, haha, <laughs> stupid human. Uh, good luck fighting the cheetah. Well, there's one thing that, you know, humans can do. The cheetahs can't. We can run for a long, long time. We can do endurance running. In fact, humans can run down horses. We can't run faster than a horse in a sprint, but we can outrun them in long distance. Humans are among the best long distance running animals on the planet. We probably are, in fact, the best long distance runners. Um, we ran down prey. We can run down, you can run down an antelope. You, human, right? Humans can run. It's not even known how far a human can run. Humans have done things like run 100 miles in a day, run 200 miles. It's not known when a human has to stop running. Eventually, of course, you do. You need to sleep. You're going to need to eat and things like, and drink and things like that. But humans can run, right? Uh, there are races that just go hundreds and hundreds of miles off over many days, of course, right? Humans can run in the Sahara Desert. This is one extraordinary adaptation. We can run in high temperatures. Uh, and that's often what, right, uh, a cheetah cannot run for more than like a minute in the heat, let's say, of the African savanna. Humans can. We sweat. We, unlike the other apes, we lost most of our hair. Um, we do all these other things. Dogs run pretty well. Wolves run pretty well. But they have to cool off by panting, right? Over the long term, you can run these animals to death. And this is thought to be one of the ways humans hunted, right, called persistence hunting or endurance hunting, right? We didn't really have rocks or spears at this point. We just hunted animals by running them until they were exhausted. This is also thought to be a way that humans domesticated horses. Okay, what's this have to do with cannabis? Well, when humans do endurance running, lots of humans get something called the runner's high. And the runner's high has some very distinctive cognitive adaptations for running. First of all, humans through the runner's high and other things can take pleasure, often extraordinary, blissful, orgasmic pleasure in running. Right? Anyone who's had the runner's high, not everyone gets it. Not everyone runs long enough. Uh, I certainly have it. Uh, when I used to do endurance running. The runner's high is just extraordinary bliss. It's like mystical joy. It's ecstasy. It's peace. It's perfection. And pain, there's no pain. The world is pure joy. And there's no worry, no fear. 
uh, space and time change, no sense of time. Time has vanished in the mysticism of eternity, right? Space is spread out forever. You can go anywhere. You are free. This is because this is an optimal state of human functioning, right? If, you know, to be a human requires you to get your food by endurance running, then evolution is going to make it so that endurance running feels really good. And it's also going to make it so that you don't suffer from the things that might stop you from endurance running, such as pain, right? So, okay, the runner's high. What regulates the runner's high in your body is the endocannabinoid system, particularly things like anandamide and 2-AG, two molecules that stimulate your natural CB receptors. And there are some other molecules and, and receptors we don't need to worry about. But, okay, the runner's high, right. The runner's high is what is simulated by taking THC. The THC high is a simulation of the runner's high. Of course it's attractive to humans. If humans are at their most intensely human, that is as human animals, when we are doing long distance running, that runner's high is going to be extremely rewarding. And so if cannabis simulates, particularly THC, simulates the runner's high, that's going to make the THC high very intensely rewarding. This connects to its prohedonic effects, right? It explains many of the subjective or phenomenological effects of cannabis, such as the distortions of time, time perception, space, the decrease of pain, the sensation of freedom, and also feelings of regularity, right? Running is a regular harmonic motion of the body. It's not spasmodic or irregular. And again, this helps to explain why cannabis or THC is useful for treating seizure disorders such as epilepsy or other irregularity of motion disorders, right? So um, cannabis, the endocannabinoids, help your body to move in regular harmonic ways, reduce pain, change your perception of time and space, make you feel uh, positive and free. Okay. That's what cannabis does. Now, it's a simulation of the runner's high, so it's not exact, right? It's because THC can often be sedating, and that's not really helpful for running. And THC can cause appetite stimulation, which, oh, wait a minute. These things are related, aren't they? Because if you're hunting down an animal by persistence hunting, you run it to exhaustion, it falls over, maybe you hit it with a rock and kill it, or it dies from a heart attack, what are you going to do with this dead animal? The answer is, and you're in the heat, right? You're on the African savanna or somewhere like that. You have to eat it. You better get the munchies real hard because you have to eat this animal. It's unlikely that you're going to carry a big game animal back to the village or camp. Right. Now, you might be able to do that in some cases, but it's generally good, especially you've done a lot of running, now you're hungry, right? And so there again, the munchies, explained by the runner's high. Also, of course, right, we have some other things, right? Sedation, well, now you're probably going to be tired, maybe you want to sleep. Hmm, that could be dangerous though, right? So this explains, the runner's high explains another feature of cannabis, which is that taking too much cannabis can make people paranoid or psychotic, where they have excessive fears. So if you're running out in nature, yeah, you um, are exposed to predators. You're trying to hunt down some prey, but right, you're being a predator, but you can become prey for another predator. Maybe that cheetah or jaguar sees you and it decides, well, I'm going to catch this human and eat it. So doing persistence hunting can make you exposed to other threats, which suggests that while cannabis, right, can tune down uh, the sensitivity of your threat detectors, right, if you start to sense a threat, the endocannabinoid system becomes overactive and suddenly makes you paranoid. You think, oh man, there's jaguars everywhere. They're going to kill me and eat me. Alert! Right? And so paranoia kicks in. This is part of the biphasic switching aspect of cannabis where the same system that initially can 
decrease the sensitivity of your threat detectors when it becomes overstimulated, right, or under certain other conditions, right, if it becomes your threat detectors get too low, right, you're not paying attention at all to the threats, boom, you better kick those threat detectors into high gear, right? You weren't paying attention. You're blissed out running, but wow, you need to be alert, man. There's jaguars and wolves and, you know, lions and tigers and bears all around you that they want to eat you too. So the runner's high, the view that the endocannabinoid system regulates. Now, it doesn't just regulate the runner's high. It regulates endurance running, right? It makes your body perform in a regular way. It turns down pain. It produces the runner's high, right? That can all be um, very explanatory paradigm for thinking about cannabis. Let me end with one little note here, which is for a long time people thought the runner's high was based on internal opiates, um, endogenous opiates, endo, endomorphins. That's false, right? That was falsified in the 90s and early 2000s, and that view is not written about much anymore because it's not true, right? The runner's high and things like that are produced by endocannabinoids and regulated by the uh, endocannabinoid system. So if you see that um, in some old literature or you see it on some sketchy website, realize that it's the endocannabinoid system that regulates the runner's high. Thanks. Get out there. Start running.